Hello and welcome to the Garage Series for Office 365. My name is Jeremy Chapman. And I'm Greg Stemp. So today we're excited to kick off a two-part series about using PowerShell to go beyond what the UI can do and manage Office 365. And I've got the best co-host today, Greg Stemp, who's one of the men behind Hey Scripting Guy and Dr. Scripto himself. Thank you, Jeremy. I am excited to be here and excited to tell people about PowerShell, what it is and how they get started with it. Right, it may be one small step for man, but we're going to also put PowerShell to the test as we race user provisioning against the shuttle making its way into orbit. But before we get started, let's have a look at today's trivia. With PowerShell, how long will it take to get 150 people in an Office 365 tenant with services provisioned? So watch in the next 10 minutes, you'll find out. So you think about it right now, there's really a couple different mindsets that might, people watching the show. One is probably thinking, hey, it's been so long that you've been running Garage Series and you haven't really covered PowerShell. But there's probably a lot of other people out there thinking, you know, where's my graphical user interface? It's 2014. Why are you showing me something that resembles DOS? Well, there's, there's actually good reason for that. Uh, so what happens is if you've seen the movie The Wizard of Oz, you know that Dorothy and everybody interacted with the wizard, right? But behind the curtain, there was a guy doing all the work. PowerShell is very similar to that in that typically on a Microsoft server product, you're clicking check boxes and doing things in the UI, but actually what's happening behind the curtain there right. is that PowerShell is constructing PowerShell commands and you click OK and then it runs a PowerShell Let's command. have a look at what that looks like here. So here's my UI. So this is just a, a user window of the UI. Now behind all of that, like you said, with, with the wizard, basically that's PowerShell. If I think about all these different fields here, like the most important one, probably user principal name, that's really got its corollary right here in terms of user principal name in PowerShell. Other things like title, we see that here. And we also see the title in this case of Ali, because again, like you said, everything that we're doing in the UI is actually manifesting itself as a PowerShell script, right? Right, people think PowerShell is really hard and it's really mysterious, but it's just another way of looking at the same information that's in the UI. And one way to think about this, if we, if we really look at the UI itself and some common tasks, what we have here is just uh, the, the admin portal. And if we think about licensing, for example, and adding users, we can easily go and enumerate the number of licenses that we have. If we have, a, for example, a look at our active user count, we can see all the people that are in the portal. That's really running PowerShell to give us these different views. Yes. Now, if I go in and I want to, say, apply a license to each and every user, give them the rights to use services, I'd have to go in and click on Ali, click on our licenses then assign all these different licenses that I want her to have. Yeah, I mean, it would work that way, sure. It but would work that way, and maybe if you've got five or 10 or 15 users, it's probably a good way to do it. But if you actually want to go a bit faster and you want to be able to do bulk tasks and do some other uh, more you know, automated processes, what you can do is use PowerShell. Yes, exactly. And this here, for example, is just our enumeration of licenses. We can see how many licenses that we have active, how many are consumed, and don't, get a, don't be afraid of this image here. This is just a few different pipes, a few different PowerShell commands where we can basically say, show me all my unlicensed users, get MSO user, where they are, a member in my Office 365 tenant, set the user licenses to add licenses for the enterprise pack, which means they get email and they get Office 365 Pro Plus and SharePoint. But it's really, when you think about this, it's really not that hard in terms of understanding what that's actually doing, and it really saves us a lot of time. Right, people look at this and they see one big thing and they freak out, but the truth is you got just some tiny little commands that you've strung together. So if you're the person who wants to just live in the UI, there are plenty of reasons why to use PowerShell, right? Let's have a look at some of those. Okay, uh, number one, uh, bulk tasks. The bulk UI tasks. is not designed to do more than one user at a time or one mailbox at a time, that sort of thing. Right, and beyond bulk tasks? Uh, multiple filters. Now, what we mean by that is in, in the UI, you can do something like find all the users who belong to the finance department. But if you want to find all the users who belong to finance or legal, you start to run into trouble. PowerShell can handle that stuff. And if you want to be able to output that to a file, because maybe another system needs it, maybe you need to present that to another uh, decision maker or something. Exactly. You want to do a simple thing like make a, a user directory. You can't do that in the UI. You can't just make you know, a list of users. Right, and there are a couple of items that aren't even present in the UI, right? Uh, yes, there's a lot of uh, exchange stuff, for example, like uh, customizing your message encryption stuff. Uh, Link has a lot of stuff that if you want to do this, you have to use PowerShell. That's all there is to it. 
And when we think about it from the syntax perspective, it's not as hard as you might think. It's really easy. Not only is PowerShell easy to use, but it's got a lot of cues in it that help you along the way. And, and a simple thing like the name of the commandlets uh, really, really tell you everything you need to know. A commandlet, by the way, is just PowerShell's name for a command. And they, they call them commandlets because they tend to be little commands. They do one thing rather than a hundred things. But if you look at the name, all PowerShell commandlets have to follow this convention. They have to start with a verb. And a verb, you recall, is just an action word. Right? So get. Okay? Every uh, PowerShell commandlet that gets something has to start with get. You're not going to find a retrieve, a, a gather, a collect. It's right. get. Okay. And also things like set. So again, something. Exactly. Right. And then, and then you've got following that is the noun. And the noun is just what are you doing. In this case, we're setting, what are we setting? We're setting a user license. And on top of that, another nice little benefit is you see the MSOL in there. That's a little modifier that tells you what kind of a user license. The MSOL is short for Microsoft Online or what we would say Office 365. So knowing absolutely nothing at all about PowerShell, you can take a look at this and you go, oh, well, this thing sets the user license for an Office 365 user. And the great thing is that all of these are standard verbs. So it's not like in the command prompt where you have, again, different verbs to be used for, to apply, for example, or, it, or yeah, set, and, or do in other In fact, tasks. there's only like 40 or so of these verbs. Right. So very, very easy. And you can see, again, you don't know anything here, but yet you can go, oh, well, I'm adding a new role member to Office 365. And the converse of I'm that? I'm removing a user. Yeah. Right. So. If I take a look back at my old command, so I've got basically, again, the get noun verb uh, construct, get MSL user, which is going to list those users out. It's basically going to do first filter in that first pipe about unlicensed users only. So that's already a, an initial filter there. We're looking at where the output of this first pipe is equal to user type member. So we're not going to do non-member account types. And we're going to set the MSL licenses to add this garage series enterprise pack. So really, now that we've done this primer, we can actually decipher more or less what's going on. Right, yeah, it's just a very simple flow. You get the users, you hand it off to where object, and where object picks out just the users we want, yep. and then it hands those users off and gives them the license. That's all there is to it. Right, so the, the other thing that we wanted to talk about is the different modules, because the great thing with PowerShell is that we can actually extend it out with other products. So we can basically load additional modules onto the Windows PowerShell module as part of Windows and do things. So in Office 365, what modules do we need? Okay, so uh, a module, just for those of you who may not be familiar, it, it's just a little software installation package that has the commandlets and the help files and the scripts that let you manage a Microsoft product. So there's four main components to Office 365, we'll call it. There's the Azure Active Directory, which is not the greatest name in the world, but that's really Office 365. Your users, your licenses, those sorts of things. Okay? And there is an Azure Active Directory module that you'll have to download and install. Okay? Right. That process, though, takes like 30 seconds. I mean, it's very simple. Okay? Exchange turns out not to have anything that you need to install. Uh, what happens is when you connect to Exchange Online, it sends you the latest copy of its module. You're still using a module. You just don't have to do anything in and advance. And one pro tip there, if you do connect with PowerShell, do it as an admin so that you can load that module into your PowerShell window. Yeah, or absolutely. Nothing's going to happen. Exactly. Yes. And then, then SharePoint and Link, again, a module. You're going to have to go to the Download Center, get it, install it. Uh, the blog will have a, a pointer to an article that tells you how to do all this. And then, you know, last night, my computer blew up and died. And I had to redo all of this, and it took all of five minutes. And I was back up and running again. Not a big deal. Right. So it's consistent. It's extensible. You see all the modules here. So one of the questions I get a lot, especially from educational institutions, they don't have necessarily an Active Directory infrastructure there. Maybe they're using a different directory service. They just want to be able to output maybe every quarter a new list of students, give them rights to various services mm -hmm. in Office 365, and do that all in as few commands as possible. Now, we did that as, as part of the Garage series. And just to show you kind of what was behind all of that, first we have a CSV file, so a comma separated value file. It's got all the different people that I want to add to a tenant. Now, I've got all of their different information, but I can have as few columns here as I want to in order to get that in. Basically, I need a UPN, the user principal name on the, on the left, 
and very little else if I want to just have those right. pieces of and, information. And one of the nice things is you have to do this anyway. Right. You have to have a list of all your users, whether you use PowerShell or not. So this is not extra work. This is something you're going to have to do anyway. And the other nice thing is even if I'm using a CSV file or I'm doing something like directory synchronization, if I do have Active Directory, I still have to use PowerShell to provision things like usage location and license in order to get those users the rights to use services. So here's what my command looks like. And don't, don't freak out if you're watching this at home. I'll close my eyes. It looks really long, but again, if we decipher what that means, we're going to import our CSV file, the one we just saw, and we're basically pointing to where that is. For each object, we're going to set these various values, user principal name, first name, display name, department, all these different things corresponding back with that CSV file. Then we're going to set their usage location, the US in this case and assign them a license, and it's all one script. So if I've got 100, or if I've got 1,000, or if I've got 10,000, or 100,000 users on that list, it will just execute against that. And we thought we'd show all of this and how it works, but while we were on location in Houston, we actually paid NASA a visit to see if we could get 150 users into Office 365 before the space shuttle hits orbit. Let's take a look. So we're here in Houston, home of NASA and Mission Control the epicenter of space exploration from Earth and most famously to the moon. On the Garage Series, we're known for racing technology. I'm going to try to add at least 150 users or approximately the total number of mission control staff into Office 365 One minute. and provision them in the time it takes for the space shuttle to reach space in around eight and a half minutes. Space shuttle now on internal power. And to do this, I'll use PowerShell and Windows Azure Active Directory while tethered to my mobile phone. Liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen fill and drain valves are closed. So I'm logged into my Office 365 tenant. And as you can see, I've only got my account and the admin account available. And I want to add 150 users as quickly as possible so I can do that within the eight and a half minutes that I have. Now to do this, fill and drain valves like closed. in the Apollo days, I'm not going to use a graphical user interface. No GUI here. I'm going to use PowerShell in order to automate the provisioning of 150 users. So you can see here that I've got a spreadsheet effectively with a CSV file and all the different users I want to add. And there are 150 of them. Now, what will happen after I add this set of users into my tenant is got to, it's got to basically add the user into Azure AD, then provision the set of services for Office 365. So now that I've got my CSV file, all I have to do now is take one line of PowerShell and point to that. But before I do that, I'm going to start the timer and see if I can get this done and get those users provisioned and set up in the cloud in the eight and a half minutes of time that I have. So let's get started. Lift off of Space Shuttle Atlantis on the mission to Open up my PowerShell console here. And to do research. I need to make sure that all of these fields correspond with the CSV file that I had. And you can see here that it's generating all the user accounts and also the temporary passwords. Now, for any one of these users that you can see here on the screen, they're already provisioned and up and running in Office 365 services. Now, the last user that I have to get provisioned at the bottom of my list of the CSV file is Yusuf. Now, when I have Yusuf provisioned, that means that all 150 users are ready in the tenant. So we've got about 45 seconds that have passed so far, we need to make sure that we can get everybody in there before the space shuttle reaches space. Atlantis almost two miles in altitude, almost six miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center already, traveling 500 miles an hour. Now we're just refreshing our view here, and we can already see that we've got quite a few users in, but if I search for Yusuf. Atlantis, go with throttle up. He's not in quite yet. Copy, go with throttle up. Yusuf's not there. A throttle up call acknowledged by Commander Charlie Hobaugh, joined on the flight deck by Pilot Butch Wilmore, Flight Engineer Randy Bresnick and Leland Melvin. Seated down on the mid deck are Mike Foreman and Bobby Satcher. Okay, come on, let's see how we're doing in PowerShell. Looks like quite a few users have been added. Only about 90 seconds have passed so far. One minute, 30 seconds into the flight. Come on! Atlanta's 13 miles in altitude, 15 miles downrange, traveling almost 2,000 miles an hour. The space shuttle's getting higher up in, in the, into space now. It's left the launch pad. It's going to be exciting to see if we can get all these users up and running before it reaches space. One minute, 50 seconds into the flight, 10 seconds away from solid rocket booster separation. All right, let's go back to our, let's go back to our, uh, our web interface here. 
We're gonna go ahead and refresh that and see if everybody's in. We're gonna do another search for Yusuf to see if we've, we've done it yet. Booster officer confirms staging a good solid rocket booster separation. Guidance now converging. Still no Yusuf, but still processing. Let's go back to PowerShell. Atlanta's traveling 3,200 miles an hour. Okay, we've had about two and a half minutes that have passed already. We just gotta make sure that we can get all these guys into our Office 365 services before the space shuttle Ocean hits space. Officer and mission control reports that the orbital maneuvering system engines have ignited. Getting closer, but we're actually doing 150 people here. Atlanta's kicking on the afterburners. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and look back into my into my web interface again. We'll just go ahead and hit F5, refresh Power the screen, see if everybody's in there. Engines draining about a half a ton of fuel per second. Going to be a lot more tank. people now. So let's go ahead and go back to our to our user list. Three and a half We're still looking for Yusuf. All of Atlantis' systems functioning by the book. 55 still not there yet. Altitude, 120 miles it's a tight range, race. Traveling almost 5,000 miles an hour. All right, come on, come on. Yusuf Kaya is the last person we need in our tenant. We can see him here. It looks like PowerShell's already uploaded his name. So we're gonna do one last refresh, about, about four minutes have passed. Now I wanna see if Yusuf is available now in my tenant. He's the last of the 150 users to provision. So let's do a search for Yusuf. Atlantis, negative return. And there he is. We've got Yusuf in the tenant. In just about four minutes and 30 seconds, the space shuttle hasn't even left the stratosphere yet. Yusuf can use the service. Let's go ahead and make sure that Yusuf actually has rights to provision, or actually, let's make sure that Yusuf has rights provisioned in the service. So we're gonna go ahead and look at the licenses for Yusuf. And there he is. He's got everything, the entire set of work, workloads. Office 365 Pro Plus he can install, he can use Link, Office Online in the, in the browser, SharePoint and Exchange. And about half the time it took for the space shuttle to reach orbit, we were able to get 150 users, the equivalent of mission control provisioned and up and running in Office 365. So I would say this is a win for Office 365. A flawless climb to orbit for the shuttle Atlantis and its six crew members en route now to the International Space Station. With PowerShell, how long will it take to get 150 people in an Office 365 tenant with services provisioned? So of course the answer was A. It actually took under five minutes to get all of those users provisioned in Office 365. And now that's good, and, but just to put this in context for everybody, I tried to enter 150 users the old-fashioned way, typing in their names, addresses, phone numbers, all that. It was taking me about two to two and a half minutes per user. So if you do the math, we were talking six hours for me to enter all those users. It took you five minutes. Under five minutes, actually. So hopefully you know what PowerShell is, you know when to use it and how to use it. Next week, we're going to go a lot deeper and really show some practical use cases for PowerShell. Of course, you can follow us on Garage. We'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. Goodbye for now.